Welcome back to CPAC 2014 here at the Hot Air Town Hall booth. Sitting next to me, the funniest man in the conservative movement, Evan Sayet. Also, one of the most insightful men in the conservative it's, movement, it's Evan. It's difficult being both, but I've managed to pull it you off. You know, somebody's got to do it, Evan, and I'm just glad that you're doing the tough work out here. See, the good news is, because I alternate, I try not to mix the two. So if I'm trying to be funny and I'm not, that's when I'm serious. Oh, okay, See, so then it, we, can, we stroke the chin at those points. That's right. Mm, okay, mm. yes. Oh, I have an go. idea. All right, so you're here. And you're talking about the the unified field theory. This is this is Einsteinian in its uh, in its uh, and I impact. Didn't, and I didn't come up with it. Actually, I knew I had it, but I didn't realize what it was. And I gave the talk to the Heritage Foundation years ago. Right. That became the single most viewed lecture in their history. Ed, not Ronald Reagan's, not Margaret Thatcher's. Mine. Now you know me. How I, ridiculous is that? It's but, awesome, though, right? <laughs> right. But it is this, by far the single most viewed lecture in their history. And people started to email me and they would say, independently, I would say literally 20, 25 people said, do you know what you have there? You've got the unified field theory of liberalism. So I took the speech and turned it into a book, The Kindergarten of Eden, How the Modern right. Liberal Thinks. Uh, Bill Whittle, if you guys are Bill Whittle fans, Absolutely. called it perhaps the most important book I've read in the last 10 years. Get this. It has forever changed and clarified the way I view the world. Now for Whittle, you know, I mean, yeah, you know, that's uh, that's high praise. Yeah, Bill just, Whittle is tremendous, and and this is a guy who ha already has a clear vision of the world. That is correct. So yes. for, to, forever changed and clarified the way he views the world. Wow. Okay. Right. Um, I now took that speech, uh, that the book, the Unified Field Theory of Liberalism, and I've applied it to the mainstream media. And I gave a lecture up in the Silicon Valley, the conservative forum up there, and Rush Limbaugh got a hold of it. And he talked about it for an hour on Thursday. Isn't that great? Talked about it again on Friday. Quoted it on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And, and it really, it, it applies. So if you look at the mainstream media, they have literally gotten every major story of our lifetime. Not just wrong but as wrong as wrong can be. Uh, they didn't know the Soviet Union was collapsing. In fact, they were telling us they were a co-equal superpower. Right. Japan was an unstoppable economic juggernaut. It's collapsed into a decades-long recession. Yeah, you remember when, uh, what was it, Blade Runner back in the 80s, right? right? Everything was Japanese, right? L.A. was completely Japanese right? and it was raining all and the they time. Were, and they were going to own... And they, <laughs> they got and that they, one really they wrong. They were going to own Beverly Hills. They were going to own Rockefeller Center. And now they're in a decades-long recession. Islam is a religion of peace. Trayvon Martin is a 14-year-old innocent kid who was killed because he wore a hoodie. Uh, Benghazi wasn't a, a planned, coordinated, well-armed mass murder by Islamic fascists. It was a spontaneous uprising over our freedom of speech, over a YouTube right. video. No matter what the issue is, the mainstream media, and it's not because they're Marxists. Katie Couric's not a Marxist. Katie Couric is an idiot. <laughs> but she, but she, she, you know, she, she knows what makeup goes with the backdrop. That's that's her. She's ism. a news presenter, really. Is what she she's is. a daytime yeah. chat show host, right? And the most recent recipient of the Walter Cronkite Award for Excellence in Television Journalism <laughs> from the no, no, no. School. Not, not the so, not the most recent. No, the the most recent is Ronan Farrow, who has been on the job three for days. three days. Three yes, days. Three days. Yes. But I do believe that may not be. For, I believe that may be another organization. This was from oh. the Annenberg School of Journalism. At, at I thought it was the same one. I, it may be. And oh my maybe. gosh, okay. But nonetheless, there you go. Yeah. But that just goes to show, it's not that Ronan is an excellent journalist or that Katie Kerr, it's how little excellence means to the academics who are in charge of teaching the next generation. Let me do this. <laughs> the next generation of journalists. But every single, and the, and the answer to why that is, to go back to the unified field theory of liberalism, the two first laws, the first two laws are the essential ones. One, I'm going to give it to you in the truncated version. I don't know how long this interview is. So the truncated version is thinking in the 1980s. Thinking was outlawed. Okay. It was deemed by the left to be a hate crime. <laughs> now here's the concept behind it. Anything you believe, anything I believe, anything the people at home believe. Viewers believe, right? Your viewers believe. How many like, viewers or viewer? Viewer, yeah. 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 Anything, Hi, Mom. <laughs> 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 Anything that anybody believes is going to be so tainted by our prejudices. Prejudices we all have, we right. can't help but have as part of our makeup of our... Prejudices based on things like the color of your skin, the nation of your ancestry, your height, your weight, your sex, your so on. Anything you believe is so tainted by your prejudices that the only way not to be a bigot is to never think at all. 
It's, yeah. Right. The second essential law is that not thinking doesn't lead to indiscriminate of policy. You still have beliefs if you don't think. But your beliefs are that success is unjust. Why should a nation, a person, a culture, a religion succeed if it's not better than any other? Right. Goodness. If, I, if, if anything that Americans find good, society finds good, that's got to be a reflection of America's bigotries. So it becomes social justice, their job, to show us that good isn't good by tearing it down. The same ideas apply to the mainstream media. But instead of being objective, because you can't be objective. Because right, there's no objectivity because there's no, there's no absolute truth. Well, because anything that you this believe is, is being tainted by, yeah. your, by your prejudices. A reporter can't be objective. Right. By definition, you cannot be objective because you have prejudices. Right. So what they try to do instead is to be neutral. Right? What's the difference between neutral and objective? Let's say you're covering a sporting event. Okay. The final score of the game is the New York Jets 87, the Bengals, Cincinnati Bengals 3. Okay, good. Well, it's my story. I can, wait, wait, wait. This yeah. is, now we're in fantasy world, right? That's my story. Oh, okay. I, can, I can do it. Okay. Mm, all right, I can yeah, do it. This, well, anything I wish to do. The Jets 87, the Bengals 3. Now, if you're an objective reporter, your story is all about how the Jets are a better team. Right. But if you're not allowed to recognize better, because it might be your prejudice, how do you know the Jets are really better? Maybe you're just bigoted because you grew up near an airport and you always loved airplanes. <laughs> right? Maybe you just think the Bengals are a lesser team because your favorite uncle was bitten by a tiger. So to that make happens. sure there is no bigotry in your story, you must say the Jets and the Bengals are equally good. Well, two things happen now. Every story you write is going to be wrong. The Jets are a better team. But now what you report in your story becomes different because now you have to explain how two equally good teams came to such disparate outcomes. Right. So if you look at the Middle East and how they cover it, how do they look at this region where you have this liberal democracy with everything liberals love, gay pride parades, a woman prime minister in the 1960s, you have the, the, the valedictorian of all the universities there is a Muslim. How do you look at this tiny liberal democracy surrounded by Islamic fascism and decide the reason there's not peace is because the Jew built a house? <laughs> you have to be an idiot, but here's how it works. Since Islam and Judaism have to be equally good, they're not allowed to believe anything else. Then how do you explain Tel Aviv with its skyscrapers? How do you explain the symphony orchestras? How do you explain, obviously, the Jews must have stolen that success. Because if they didn't steal it, there's something better about Judaism. They're not allowed to believe that. When the Muslims commit terrorist acts, why would these lovely people who want peace do such horrible things? They must have been provoked. So now the or journalists... Victims. So or both. Or both. Right. So now the journalist goes and looks and finds, well, what did the Jews do that could have provoked? Oh, oh, they built a house. It must be the house. They built a house. And that becomes the storyline. Same thing with Benghazi. How can you look at this well-coordinated, well-timed, well-armed, well-executed mass murder of our ambassador on the anniversary, anniversary of 9-11 and decide it was a spontaneous uprising based on a YouTube video from six months ago? Because it had to have been something that provoked them. Otherwise, they're bad. They're not allowed to be bad. The journalist isn't allowed to recognize that they might be bad. So what is it that could have provoked them? They can't find anything. They can't find anything. They, ah, a YouTube video from six months ago. That must be it. Hmm. And now we stroke the chins again. Yes. I, mean, I, this I, is I, what, I believe that's a double stroke. Th th that is a double stroke, yes. And moral relativism. I mean, this is what we're talking about, moral relativism. Yeah, but, is that but, everybody, when, you do that, but when you do that, they can buy anybody else's book. If you, if you call it, oh, well, there you go. This is true, yes. to buy my book. Okay. And your book again <laughs> is? The Kindergarten of Eden, the How the Modern Liberal Thinks. And so where does that take us? What, what do we do to correct this? Right. All right. There's good news and there's bad news. Okay. The good news is. No, 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 wait a minute. There can't be good news and bad news because it all has to be equal, equal news. news. Well, right. what happens is eventually they equal out. Okay, all right, good, all right. Or, Just want to make sure. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I patented that move, by I the way. Yeah, you I, actually owe I have money to, now. I have, to, I have to pay you like, what, like 12 cents it's every, 12 every cents. Okay, there you go. But it's already up to something like 48 cents now. Yeah, there you go. We can round it up to a half buck. Um, America is not divided in two. We're divided in three. There are those of us who get it, who get that the better does in fact actually exist. And our job as human beings is to use our intellect to seek out the better and then use our bodies to toil to create the better. Right. All right. We recognize, for example, America is, is exceptional and we seek to conserve 
those values. That's why we're yes. called conservatives. Yes. All the way on the other side are those that you can do nothing about. There's no way to change Rosie O'Donnell. She's a moron. Okay. All right. She's she's an angry, bitter, entitled, whatever she is. If she happens to be a relative of yours, talk about something else. <laughs> I, I would say. Fortunately, talk, not. But okay. But I would say talk about the weather, but you can't because of global warming. <laughs> but uh, it's fine. But there are a whole bunch of us. I was one of them. David Mamet was one of them. Uh, yes. Dennis Prager was one of them. Dennis Miller was one of them. Who we recognize that America is great, for example. But we've never heard what conservatives believe from a conservative. Where would we have heard it? I heard what conservatives believe from my liberal rabbi, from my liberal school teachers, from my liberal professors, and my liberal rock stars, and my li liberal journalists. Right. Where would I have heard what? So each and every one of us, and I call it adopt a Democrat. <laughs> right? Find one person, and it's like adopting a child. Look, my book's called The Kindergarten of Eden. For, for a reason. reason, yes. And they are, they are morally and intellectually retarded at the level of the five-year-old child. And by the way, that sounds like hyperbole. A huge, a literary phenomenon was written called All I Ever Need to Know I Learned in Kindergarten. Yes. And he was serious. Be nice to each other. Coexist. Fairness. Fairness. It's not fair. It's not fair. Every child is special, but no child is more special. You know what you see that now? Extrapolated into adult terms, the United Nations. Right. Every nation is special, but no nation is more special. Right. Uh, so adopt a Democrat by one person. It's important that they be in your life. Because what the left does is they have so they've been so successful at demonizing us that watching this they go oh that guy is just whoever is, he's, is a a he's a hater he's a hater he's a hater hater right um, but if he's your cousin if he's your, it's harder to do that if yes. it's a colleague you've known for thirty years if it's your next door neighbor who's come and brought you chicken soup when you've been sick it's hard to use that tactic and it's very much like raising a child. You don't make everything a teachable moment. One thing we do wrong is we try to have that argument and win it, win it, win it. No. You find, you talk about anything else, sports, whatever else you would normally talk about, but when he says something particularly egregious, like, I can't believe that filmmaker made that thing that made the, 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 the Muslims kill the ambassador. You step up, you say, well, actually, here's what happened, and then move on. Right. And every once in a while, you even let him win. It's like a child. Let him beat you in the front door every once in a while to tell that, aren't you smart, liberal? <laughs> you're such a, you're so smart. I didn't know. Oh, thank you. And then, but over the course of time, you will change people. I promise you. Evan Sayet. And by the way, your, your website is? EvanSayet.com. E-V-A-N-S as in Sam. A-Y-E-T.com. And keep your, if you like your plan, you can keep your plan, you can keep your plan, period. That's what these buttons are for. That's the period. And that's at be the media because if we and i may have said this already but it's essential if we all change one person then we double our numbers yes all right we don't have to always come at them from the top yes come at them from the top come at them from every angle but one-on-one -on -one, if we all change one person we double our numbers there you go evan say it again thank you very much for being with Thanks, us today man. we'll be back with more from hot air town hall here at cpac 2014.